In this video, we're going to talk about two words no YouTuber ever wants to see, reused and repetitious. And if you ever get an email from YouTube containing either of those words, then I'm afraid you ain't getting monetized. But in truth, it's your own fault. Harsh, but fair. But the prevailing wind, the course of direction YouTube is on, along with the mass of policies now in place, should be enough of a warning to you. Let me give you an example. I've watched the News Be Funny YouTube channel for years. It compiles all of the best news bloopers from around the world. But six months ago, something really odd happened. The channel deleted almost all of its videos and wiped out half a billion views. I mean, who would voluntarily do that? channel that's in trouble with a YouTube law. That's who. YouTube basically told the channel you can't just stitch together content with minimal changes or no changes at all. What you and I would call a montage. But the News Be Funny channel wasn't some fly-by-night operation. They'd been on YouTube for a decade and have appeared in publications such as Time Magazine and GQ. So the News Be Funny channel were just doing what they thought was okay. Until it wasn't. And YouTube's advice to fix all of this was to add commentary to all of the news clips. And that's exactly what the channel did. We begin with Instagram changing its algorithm. Anchor Callan Hoffman has the tech bites. Instagram is changing its ranking algor algorithm. Wow, that's a tough word, everyone. <laughs> Next, let's turn to anchor Keith Russell for the sign off. Thank you for watching. Nah, the whole flow of the video is ruined by the narration. Don't tell, show. But the problem is, News Be Funny have to include that narration to make it transformational content. The spirit of the reused content policy is to make sure that YouTube is monetizing original content that adds value to viewers. If a creator puts a thoughtful or funny spin on content that the creator didn't originally create, the creators therefore transform the content in some way. And as a creator myself who spends on occasion days putting together videos, I'm in general agreement with this policy. It is infuriating to see some people who I can't call creators take content from here, there and everywhere, mash it all up and get millions of views, profiting from other people's work. Having said that, what I will concede is that there is a very fine line between content harvesting and content curation with some transformational effort. It is YouTube that sets that line and none of us know exactly where that line is drawn, and YouTube themselves can also get it wrong. At least in the creator's opinion. And so, if you decide that you want to grab your video and audio content from existing sources, you are already on YouTube's reused content radar. Read this document inside out so you know exactly what to do. I'll link it in the description. And as a final point on reused content, this has nothing to do with copyright. If the original video has a Creative Commons license or you have permission from the content owner, that doesn't matter. If you don't change anything to the source material, YouTube will consider it reused. And rightly so. Alright, let's move on to re 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 repetitious content. That was a glitch in the metrics. Just like reused content, YouTube has a fairly hefty outline of what repetitious content means in their documentation, which I've linked below. And this has much more to do with what's going on at a channel level as opposed to individual videos. Now, this isn't about using the same intro and outro in every single video, although you really shouldn't do that, it's a big waste of time. And this isn't about covering the same topic in every single video. As long as you have a different angle, a different approach, every time you should be fine. This is about reading from books, comics, and the internet without offering anything new, changing music to dodge content ID, and repetitive content of a low value. And this is where creators really need to take note. Recent articles are indicating that AI generated content is against Google's guidelines. And since YouTube is a part of Google, you can bet this stance filters into video content. And it does. And in particular, it's these two points that I feel most creators slip up on. Programmatically generated content and image slideshows. These two points put you in a very particular YouTube bucket. And it's a very popular one faceless channels. Now, let me stress at this point, there is nothing inherently wrong with faceless channels. There is no face to this video guiding me through an animated recreation of a World War II event. But there is a human voiceover and original graphics I have not seen anywhere else. Problems can start to arise when creators use tools that computers 
mostly take care of, such as text-to-speech, a common practice in short-form videos but still very jarring in long-form content, and static images or stock video that's clearly not original content. When the content is so similar from video to video that viewers can't tell the difference or even if a human created it, you're going to end up on YouTube's repetitious content radar. All of which leads us back to trying to figure out YouTube's imaginary line between what's acceptable and what isn't. Okay, this is getting weird now. I appreciate that a lot of this may sound very technical and quite vague. So let me put it in its simplest terms possible. If your goal as a creator is to one day monetize your YouTube channel, then do less copying, pasting, downloading, programming, and more of what my t-shirt says. Just create. Keep it authentic. Keep it genuine. Keep it original. Keep it you. Now Rob has kindly let me outro this video. So if you want to avoid being a copyright idiot watch this video over here. Also my hot take is that sub for sub actually works, so unless you want to be a YouTube noob for the rest of your life spam the YouTube comments as if your worthless life depended on it.